Sylvain Abella. Merci. Euh, bonjour à toutes et à, toutes et à tous. Uh, hi all. So I'm going to talk about uh, messy humans and clean code. So it's mostly based on my own story, because it's the one I know best. And uh, the problem is that change is hard. And during our path to learning code, we come across many knowledge that, that is actually dangerous. And uh, so how can we avoid some of the pitfalls that, you, that I felt were easy to fall into? And uh, what inspiration can we take to just uh, first take us out of the problems that we got into? And second, once we get senior managers, mentors, how can we help beginners or not so beginners to also avoid this kind of traps? So um, I'm French, and uh, between age 15 and 18, you have to choose mostly one of the three king branches of uh, French education. So ES is for business, which I didn't like. L is for literature, but I loved it. But the problem is if you get angry or have a problem with your teacher, he can give you bad marks for no reason, right? And since I was, uh, I was very pedantic and a very hard kid, um, I loved literature, that, that, but that way was not for me. So I chose S for science, which I also loved, and it, it led me to, to learning code. So 18, I'm finally learning to code. That's pretty fun. But uh, I know nothing. So as a beginner, what can you do to get better? Some of the easy ways are to rely on some principles. You can also find some quotes from people you admire, or like the teachers tell you these quotes, and you find them funny. Some of these quotes are jokes. This is quite a problem, because you think you will learn to code better, but it wasn't a, a useful principle. It was just a joke. So if you think this is serious, you can be, well, a bit disappointed some time later. And uh, so then you, you just look for guidelines. The problem is when you're very young, and um, a problem in code is to fit everything in, in just one brain. Uh, you don't have much experience. You don't really know, and you, you have to start little step by step. So my kind of approach as a know-it-all brat was don't make me think, just give me an answer. Of course, as time goes on, uh, I almost never answer anyone anything, but it depends. Sorry to all the beginners I helped, because uh, I always on began by it depends, then a long story. So change is hard. Uh, luckily or not so luckily, some people have made the, the path for us. So we are first in denial, then in anger. After that, we try to bargain with the situation, and uh, hopefully not so long of depression, then acceptance. So I chose code because code was clean. It's logical, it's rational, it's science, and it's perfect. And humans, they are irrational. They always break. They are painful to understand and to communicate with, right? But the problem and the crisis for me was that even the, the, the best code could break. And that human, all the fallible humans, still managed to create awesome organi organization uh, with awesome results. So what's the takeaway? Well, I guess it's forgiveness. You can forgive, like Olivier did in his talk. You can forgive that the, the code for being bad, and you can try to work around that. And if humans are so great at this, it's because we're getting reliability out of an unreliable part. When I try to do anything in life, I know that perhaps tomorrow it, it, be, it will be hard to get out of bed because I'm just so tired or whatever. But if, we, if all the process runs around understanding that anything can happen and have some fallback, everything can go much better. So first I thought I was in a very simple world. Uh, I made elegant code and uh, tricky one-liners to show how smart I was. It's written in red because, of course, this is a trap. Then, just after I do my very short and elegant code, um, the, the teachers and, and the teacher assistants in my school, they force me to say, Oh, yeah, you coded a calculator 
cool, one plus three works. How about one plus or one plus a or uh, just enter? So my elegant code turned into pages and pages and pages of error management, which I thought was inelegant. But that's just privilege, right? One of the many manifestations of privilege. I can do very short and funny and clever code because everywhere someone is taking the burden of doing the error management, of doing the fallback. I was relying to get my very clean, short, beautiful code. I was relying on the human, on the human which, which I thought was fallible. I say, of course, no one will type one plus a. But of course, people can do that. So I can't blame the world for, for not fitting to my code. And of course, I will have to fit my code to the world. The answer, I think, is in user experience. And of course, that's a whole new job. How can I get better at this, too? Well, it's OK to use metaphors when you teach code to beginners. And it's really awesome to find conceit. Well, conceit in French is metaphor filet. So it's great if you find a metaphor that you can run again and again and again. Uh, I, I had to look in English, so it's the word conceit, but it only works in poetry, right? So you use the same metaphor again and again and again to teach uh, think more things to people. And once the metaphor is good, you have to let, to let it go, to stop using it. It's OK to let it go when the metaphor is past useful, right? So I don't know, perhaps Lisa and Sonia can tell you more, but uh, when we do Women on Rails and I try to ex explain things to people, it's great to start with a metaphor, but as soon as it can mislead the, the people, you have to tell them where it stops. And along that journey of 10 years of code, uh, I'm very glad because these two principles never failed me, right? Uh, Yagni's, you ain't gonna need it. It, sh it means that yeah, of course, it's great. You spent three months coding. Uh, I don't know, because I don't need it, actually. And KISS, keep it simple, sometimes stupid. Well, uh, we could remove the fourth letter. It's the same. Whenever I try to, to keep things uh, very, very simple, it never failed me. So thanks, Lucas, for, for your talk about this. Um, there are two, two principles that led me to better code, but uh, gave me much more problems. The first is dry, don't repeat yourself. And the second was uh, well known in the early Rails 1 days. It's uh, try to have skinny controllers and fat models. And then, uh, especially at school, I found a lot of uh, advice that was actually harmful to me, and uh, often harmful to many people who, I don't know, when teacher, tr teachers tried to tell, oh, just use the design patterns. These people, and myself included, uh, first started to get worse, and first started to have convoluted designs. Uh, and we tried to map the world, well, the patterns to the world, and not the world to our code. Notice that in the, in the, in the, in the part that works, uh, design patterns are just not present. Um, now I like design patterns better because I've read an, um, an interview of, of some people from the Gang of Four books, and they say, no, 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 for, for decades, you, everyone misunderstood what we said. The design pattern book is not how you should do things. It's about, I had a problem, I made this, and now this is a catalog to know how I should call it for my uh, friends and colleagues to understand. And uh, the last principle that misled me was meritocracy. So all of, the, all of these principles can be, under, can be dangerous. Yagni is, of course, you, you, don't, you ain't going to need it, but still try to plan a bit. Kiss, just remove the stupid letter from it. And dry, it got better when I understood that it, it was leading me more to extract libraries or gems and not to have many or just one god object. Skinny controller, fat models, well, it's no, not many people say it anymore, so it's now about service objects, so I won't bother you with it. And uh, design patterns, when, once I understood what actually they were, uh, I also jumped from C++ Java to Ruby. 
And then I discovered that many of these design patterns were hugely language dependent. When you use Ruby, the pattern visitor, which means hundreds of lines of code in, in C++, turns to .map. Of course, that's a, short, that's a caricature, but uh, some, some of the design patterns are hugely dependent on the language you use. The best practice, I'm still getting my head around it. I don't understand what a best practice is, except that the guy who's telling it to you is actually saying, just accept what I'm telling you. I, won't, I will not explain. And meritocracy just often means status quo is good. Don't question anything. So all of these principles, they don't deserve the name principle. And the, the name principle, they are just not laws. They're just um, goals. You can try to be more dry. You can try to uh, use some patterns in your design. But you should not focus on being absolutely uh, never repeating yourself. So it's also OK just to get slightly, be slightly better today. Same here when we coach uh, uh, beginners or absolute beginners at, uh, at Remain on Wales or whatever, wherever, or on Paris or Biz Slack. I often want to do like full books, and I say, read the book and come back later. But it's OK to just get slightly better just today. And it's OK also to take on that as long as it's an informed choice. You know that the beginner will not have the most optimal approach, but it's the one he can do for now. So it's fine. When I started my school, I discovered some idols like Donald Knudsen, Kent Beck, which I assume many of you have read bits of knowledge from time to time. Um, and these are guide, guided me during my school and my coding years. So premature optimization is the root of all evil is an awesome quote. But it's only years later that I found the second part of the quote from another person, which was premature generalization is the other root of all evil. And same here, when I read uh, Kent Beck, make it run, make it, make it right, make it fast. Well, make it run, make it right. And then what bad is it to stop there? If speed is a problem, benchmark. And then you will optimize just the part that need to be optimized. And some of the quotes that I thought were guidance for my teachers or teacher assistants, well, they were only jokes. So it's, these ones were dangerous, because they are small, they are memorable, uh, they are fun. You think they will get you better at your craft. And they are especially effective to win arguments. The problem is they are just jokes, right? So once you weed out all of the snarks, all of the exclusive language, well, what, what's the use in making fun of PHP or, or C++ or whatever? Um, I'm left with jokes that I can't necessarily understand. So what I recommend to, to you as a mentor or to you as a beginner is just you keep, keep the jokes you don't understand. Keep the quotes. Keep them somewhere in a, in a book, in a Gmail draft, in, in your head. And then when you have the time with uh, fellow coders, just um, Take one out from time to time, time to time and confront your, uh, your opinion on this to, to theirs. Once again, well, Michel there at Paris RB or, or Lucas yesterday about every talk about simplicity. I guess there are many, as many kinds of, of simplicity as there are coders. So um, it's nice to take this quote from, touch, from time to time. And. Uh, then there are what people say. The, um, you, you go on the internet, especially on Hacker News, and some of, some of the quotes, they are just religion. You cannot question them. Uh, one, one of such sentences is fail fast. Everyone is telling you, telling you to, to fail fast. Fail fast in your code. Fail fast in your business. But you, know, you don't do it while driving. Fail fast in your car. Go in the first wall, go in the second wall. Perhaps sometimes you will understand that the road was right, not left, not slightly left, not in the front. 
Now, fail fast is actually try to have frequent feedback. And the tool is, is different. Uh, same here, like um, in most of the talks today and yesterday, people will try to find you uh, stuff to, to have frequent feedback. If you're a manager, go find your people. If you are from the business, find what the, the market tells you. If you're a coder, um, go have a look line by line of, of what happens. But if you are a, a software architect, what you can do is you try your architecture and with the, the simplest code that you can, and then you see if it works. The goal is not to fail your architecture. The goal is not to have a code that does not even compile or run. The goal is to just take out IRB or whatever, or Pry Console, to test things. And once, it, once, you, and once you have the feedback, it's, it's very fast for you to, to converge to the right thing, and then it works. A thing that people mostly told me when I was stressed in my younger days was, hey, it's no big deal. No one will die because of your software. Well, yes. People do die of, uh, like, uh, no, it's too depressing, I won't mention, but uh, people can die with your, with your software, software, right? Um, space rockets can blow up, or um, medical equipment with uh, radiation can uh, give you the wrong dose or the, to the wrong place, or Facebook and social, social network stuff can give your address to someone who hates you and hate you enough to come to harm you. So when people say, it's no big deal, no one will die because of your software, they are just saying, sit back and relax, right? And I mean that in two ways. Sit back and relax, because you look stressed, and you won't do good software in that condition. But also, sit back, relax, and have a look at what your software actually does. Remember that. Oh, yeah, when, when I do stuff with integers and floating point uh, arithmetic, what I usually do is have lower and upper bounds if things get messy. You do that to radiation uh, medical equipment. Perhaps the minimum dose is not the one you should give. Uh, and I couldn't resist to, to give you this French comic, Les Shadok. It's all even for me because it's my parents' gener generation. Is uh, the, the Shadok scientists determined that their rocket has a one person, person chance of working? So uh, they, ma they make a hundred of them and blow the 99 first uh, on purpose, so they're sure the, the last rocket will work. Okay. So once you have taken all, all of the principles, jokes, and understood the danger of all this. What you are trying to go look for are guidelines. And there are so many smart acronyms that give me FOMO, right? Uh, SOLID is uh, perhaps the most well-known I've met, I've met from people I've met. Uh, and it's easy to mi misunderstand every single letter of SOLID. Uh, you perhaps won't know in the Rails community the GRASP, the EIP, the, the UML, RAD, and RUB thing. Don't care, it's, it's not really important to, to read all of this. Uh, it's just an, a glimpse of how scary it can be when you are just looking for the truth and uh, with little guidance. So what's more interesting is having a look at what are the reasons that people wrote all of this. Why did someone wrote the software engineering book of knowledge? Why did anyone thought that plan, do, check, act is uh, the absolute truth and a method that you should deploy in all of your company. Well, the reason I try to think of everything, but we know it's impossible. The reason is ask more questions. Well, it can't harm, but at some point you have to code and deliver. And, uh, or just to use common sense. It's the same. Common sense is the least common thing in the world, so it's not really helpful. So what I give you is what would my grandfather do, right? So my grandfather was looked like, when I was young, he looked like a person of habit. Uh, it's because you have to make sense of things. When, when, you are ch when we are children, we have to make sense of, of the world around us. And it helps to have habits, because we have metrics, and then we get a sense of what normal is. On your web application, 
say you have a few hundred or thousand users a day, and uh, such traffic, your, CPU, your CPUs are at such level or whatever. If suddenly you have millions of people, it can mean that you, your application just was on TV and every, everyone is interested in it, or it can be that you're getting hacked, or it can be, get, can be that uh, some of your code is running wild. So just have habits. If it works, keep, keep them. If it's bad, stop, stop it. And uh, in your code, I won't repeat what was in uh, the great talks today and yesterday, but you know, just have logs. Uh, debug flags and feeder flipping. You can use event sourcing to have all of the history and rewind and, and, uh, and, and forward your, your state. That's awesome. You don't even need to have all of the, all of the complex th theory behind it. You just have you know, records in your database. We do that well in Rails in uh, Active Record. And uh, you don't know what's normal when you come to a new team or a new project or new open source code. So you just copy the team style. It helps if you have guidelines or Rubicup, of course, but you know, just do the same. We can do error handling. I don't want to do uh, Oliver's talk again, but what my grandfather did was to be persistent. If you try something and it doesn't work and you stop, you're just being lazy. So retry at least once or twice. But don't be stupid either. If, if it's not been working for five times in a row, What's the use in trying again? So log the problem for later, ask for help, try new things, and uh, don't burn bridges. Say, OK, so uh, React didn't work for me. So this is bullshit. I, I will ha now hate everyone who talks to me about React, and I will, uh, and I will troll people on the internet because I'm very angry. No, it's, it's useless. You just you try the tool, perhaps the problem is, is you, perhaps the problem is the, the fit from the tool to your problem. Don't burn it. It's, keep it for later. So once again, one of the solutions is to have logs, debug flags, and feature flipping. And uh, nothing should ever block. And then this is the first time that I use a design pattern. And this, of course, is the one that I wasn't taught at school. It's a circuit, bre circuit breaker. You have this in many software, I'd say. You tried once or twice or a hundred times. Things didn't work. The, the flag isn't set in the database. So when, uh, when it works, either no one has emails sent to them or someone has a million emails by tomorrow morning, right? Circuit Baker, I won't try to give you code or to tell your, you your code is shit, right? I will just tell you that Circuit Breaker, just log somewhere that if you have tried it four times, Stop it. And uh, same as Oliver's talk, graceful recovery and explicit warning will never harm you. I was also impressed by collaborative uh, work. Every human is fallible, and when I took the car to drive, I was really surprised that everyone doing bullshit and uh, everything that could go wrong in a car, and still some people are killed, but not like thousand every day in every street, street. That was impressive to me. So my grandfather would say, well, use your blinking lights, but you know, don't really expect the other will do. Um, so the hidden lesson is tell your plan to people. So if you're doing stupid shit, they will just tell you back and say, wow, that looks weird. That's from the habits part. Um, when you've told your plan to people, just follow it. And then when people told you their plan, trust but verify. It does no harm. And uh, when you have stuff to do, you choose what and how to delegate. Uh, so once again, that's, that's the best uh, advice because it never gets deleted. Um, logs and debug flights and feeder flips help because you, you can know what you're doing wrong or, out or, or whatever. And what's awesome is my grandfather could also optimize your code. Because if you, if you had a look at him when he worked, the, the answer to performance is just to do less. Your application is slow. Yeah, do less stuff. Uh, perhaps you're doing things inefficiently. It's the same. My grandfather didn't take, uh, I don't know, uh, and I will not say it in English, I don't know. But you, you, wouldn't, you would not take the car or, uh, or the truck if you just needed uh, 
uh, a bike, right? One great thing, but that's, that's not for code, that's for humans, or for code too, is just you, you do one thing at a time. When you are developing, when you are coaching newbies, when you are uh, doing your architecture at work, you do just one thing at a time. You have to focus, you have to be clean, you have to fit everything in your head. Do just one thing at a time. But of course, your company is doing hundreds of things at the same time. So the answer is to do everything over a week or a year, but to do one thing at the same time. And of course, if you think quality is expensive, try the cost of non-quality. So once again, the, use, the useful advice is just to know if you are in great time, in normal time, or if you are living through hard times. Like if your server has CPU available, it's, it's perhaps the right time to send all of these emails. Um, or to do that report cal calculation that you will serve during the day. And from, from, that, from that point, you can choose if you will be in survival mode or in leisure mode. Uh, and the same, you, you can put some if in your, in your code or, or root the, co the func function calls uh, to see if things go well. I lost everyone. No? OK. People are very silent. I'm not used to. Um, the same, uh, availability. When I went to, to work, we were a very small company. And now we are bigger, we work with bigger people. And once you want something to run 24-7, it's actually three to four people. Because you have someone to work during the week, you have someone for the nights, someone for the weekends. And of course, you can try to have a backup if any of these people are sick. So about the code, it's. It's not a problem. Code doesn't sleep. But if you want to run something with, with quality uh, during the day and to run your business, just remember that whenever you have to do something 24-7, try to be at least three to four people in the team. After some time, I developed, and I, I guess it was around five years of coding, uh, I found Zen. So I'm not going to say that I'm changing religions or what. But uh, some of the, the writings and blogs that began the title with then started to resonate with me. Uh, I, I guess that two years ago, I sent the Zen of Duck Typing. Don't know if old-time Rubyists have read this and uh, if new ones have ever thought about it. But the Zen of Duck Typing is a great uh, email that you can find on the internet on a Ruby mailing list. The Zen of Python 2, I was in a sneaky mission to explore what the rivals do. And well, the, the Zen of Python is good. It's 20, 20 pieces of advice that you can forward to even to beginners. These are not traps for them. And uh, that's for leisure, but I discovered the codelesscode.com, which are a series of uh, 280, I guess, uh, short stories about uh, Buddhist monks doing Java code. It's pretty fun. So, what I liked in the, in the whatever is written on the internet with Zen on top, it's that they are not trying to tell me that I'm wrong. Uh, that's pleasing. Um, but they are not trying to tell me that I'm right either. They are just showing, hey, look, there's a paradox some, some, somewhere. And um, what I like to think is uh, the, the, the Zen koans and proverbs, they are just trying to make you make informed choices instead of being passive and not understanding what's happening to you or your business or your code base. You know, they are just saying, hey, look, something is happening. So you can either accept it or change. And uh, this is the time to revisit dry, dry, the, the, the word that's still uh, got mentioned uh, hundreds of times at this conference and every year. So I thought and I understood dry as um, information. I, I don't ever, ever try to, to ask beginners or people in my team to strive to have dry code. I don't try to teach that. It's, for me, it's now all about information. You have to get your information for just one true source of truth. 
And it's fine to accept duplication. You will have information duplication. You will have logs. You will have tracking. You will need to compare um, clients for yesterday from to clients from today. And it's fine, too, to have duplication, because if I get uh, Sonny's number, phone number, um, he has the information. But I will duplicate it. And uh, it's, it gets duplicated everywhere, right? So dry in the code looked dangerous to me. I, I don't try people on the, I don't ask people to, to dry every class into uh, something very short, very elegant, with uh, 10 lines of metaprogramming, generating thousands of lines and bugs, of course. I just no, just use the code, duplicate whenever it's fine. And I don't try to dry everything in, into a gem, like NPM's left pad. Uh, problem showed us uh, recently. I just try to learn what's in the standard library. I think active support is too heavy and too big, but at least if you do Rails, you have it. So why not try to reuse it, of course, instead of uh, doing code libs and other gems. And for me, the two, the two keys to understand dry, the first is Sandy Metz uh, with her famous uh, I guess uh, nothing is something talk. Uh, then the blog post duplication is far cheaper than a wrong abstraction. And uh, DDD, Domain Driven Design, has an interesting take on, uh, on dry. Is first, we have lots of code that manage customers. Then we try to, to make it dry in just one customer class. But I think both of these approaches are, are wrong. DDD says that you try to, to split your business in, uh, in uh, zones, in uh, bounded context. And so they say it's fine to duplicate things if they are in different business context. Because if you are doing, uh, I don't know, um, uh, customer management, and you try, my email is really important. That, so for marketing people, or people who need to contact you, an email should be unique, but should be validated. They need to know that you are reading this mail. But if you are going to, to a bounded context of uh, invoicing, I don't really care about your email, right? I just care that it's unique and that I can link it to, to the rest of the data. And if I go to the bounded context of accounting, I don't need your email. So uh, we are all hungry or all tired. That's the end of the talk. So my advice, uh, while not uh, uh, duplicating the content from Olivier and, uh, and Lucas and, uh, and Jenna and from the rest, just stick to the basics. Just improve one a day. Do scary things often, but safely. Be aware of what you like, because what you don't like, you will try to to have a look for it to, to, to tell it it's wrong. I don't like it, so it's wrong. That's, that's very easy. But beware of what you like. I like it, so it must be true. This is where the, tra where the traps lie. And uh, handle humans with care. Thank you. Hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, my question will be short. Uh, have you written a book or more than one? No. Have you published anything? Probably you, sh you should. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah. Any other question? Remark? Chose pas claire? Thank you again. Cheers. Uh, yeah. It's my running gag. So uh, I want, a I want uh, to make a special, a special thank to Sylvain. Uh, we are the co-organizers of uh, the Paris Airbnb uh, meetup. 
and uh, yeah, it's our duo is functioning since 2011. 11, 10, 9, I don't know. And uh, yeah, it's run. Uh, Totally without meetings, I, I, I think. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it works really well. So thank you for that. Thanks.